Blessed be the name of the Lord. It is another privilege for me under God to welcome you on today's broadcast. I want to thank God for your life and I want to celebrate the faithfulness of God to everyone connecting to this broadcast. God has been faithful. God is merciful, gracious, good, kind, benevolent. And every attribute of God have proven him to be a God that cannot be compared with anybody in heaven and on the earth. I want to thank God for the privilege to come again today and share with you the words of God by the Holy Ghost. I am confident that the Lord will speak to you. And today's encounter will be another unforgettable encounter with the scriptures, with the truth, with the anointing, with grace, and with the Holy Ghost. It is well with you. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Father, I thank you for this weekly privilege known as navigating life through grace. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have been doing in the course of this weekly broadcast. And Lord, I thank you for what you will do again today. Gracious Father, I ask that by your spirit, you will take over today's broadcast. The word of God will come with grace, with clarity, with accuracy and authority. Let there be a heart of understanding, quick understanding, to understand the plans of God and to understand the will of God. Lord, I pray that everyone connecting to this broadcast will be truly blessed, encouraged, and comforted and strengthened by your spirit through your word thank you father i give you praise i give you glory in jesus name i pray let me welcome you once again on today's broadcast having considered the different dimensions of truth about the subject of the imperatives of spiritual growth and maturity for more than one year Today, I am continuing in the new series of teachings that I began in the last three weeks, which is generally titled, Look Up, God's Way is Not Down. Look Up, God's Way is Not Down. This new series of teachings is packaged at the instance of the Holy Ghost to comfort and strengthen the believers in God through Jesus Christ at such a time as this. It is a timely scriptural message and a much needed encouragement to sustain the believer's trust in God and keep their faith in his promises regardless of the unpredictable circumstances of life. The general focus of this new series of teachings is to empower the believers of these last and perilous days with the scriptural truth that will practically strengthen their personal work with God and provoke their faith to experience the miraculous in the face of the impossible. I am confident in the Holy Ghost that, as a believer, this new series of teachings will do seven things for you. Number one, it will personally develop your faith in the Word of God. Number two, it will strengthen your dependence and trust in God. Number three, it will stabilize your feet through the storms of life. Number four, this new series of teachings titled Look Up, God's Way is Not Down will enhance the consistency of your scriptural confession regardless of your physical condition. Number five, it will empower you to live a supernatural life in a natural world. And number six, it will keep you bold and courageous in the face of satanic harassment and intimidation. And number seven, this new series of teachings, generally known or titled as Look Up, God's Way is Not Down, is going to propel you to experience and enjoy the victory that Christ has made available for you through redemption in his blood. At the end of today's broadcast, I believe that every believer will be encouraged and stirred up in the spirit to believe God, to do incredible things 
in the midst of seemingly impossible circumstances. I am confident in the Holy Ghost that the truth of today's broadcast will undoubtedly deepen your personal trust in God and in His Word in spite of the general hopelessness that has become a global phenomenon. So let me take look up. God's way is not down, but fall. Look up. God's way is not down, but fall. I'm taking my text from Psalm 121, verse 1 to 8. Psalm 121, verse 1 to 8. The Bible says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills, from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel, shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. In the scripture that I've just read, the psalmist declared his confidence of receiving or failing help from the Lord. It is a declaration that reveals that authentic help does not come from the hills, it actually comes from the Lord. The upward look is not just a look onto the hills, it is a look beyond the hills. It is indeed a look unto God the creator of the hills and the sure source of unfailing health. Looking onto the hills is a foolish and helpless look that leads to frustration and disappointment. It is rather wise and helpful to look to the creator of the hills. Whenever your view of God is distorted and blocked by the hills, you will miss the help that comes from heaven. Don't let the hills of life disconnect you from the God of heaven and earth. The hills of life will distract you from focusing on God and experiencing the benefit of his love and help. When you are looking beyond the hills to the creator of the hills, you have simply declared your preference for the unlimited help that God can bring to you from heaven or earth. You have widened the options of supernatural assistance available to you. By looking beyond the hills to the God of the heaven and earth, then it is only the help that is not available in heaven and on the earth that will not be available to you. The clear truth is that the creator of the heaven and earth is higher and more powerful than all the hills of life put together. Brethren, in agreement with the psalmist, I recommend a look beyond the hills to the creator of the hills in our day. This is because looking beyond the hills has the capacity to achieve eight critical benefits in your life as a believer. Looking beyond the hills has the capacity to, number one, deliver you from the hopelessness and the limitations of the physical life. Looking beyond the hills to the creator of heaven and earth has the capacity, number two, to set you free from walking your fingers to the bone in life. Number three, looking beyond the hills has the capacity to lift you beyond the pain of disappointment, failure, and the uncertainty attached to the so-called help of friends, family members, and associates. Looking beyond the hills to the God who created the hills and who made the heavens and the earth has the capacity, number four, to give you freedom that the unexpected predicament, frustration, and confusion of life cannot undermine. Number five, looking beyond the hills to the creator of the hills, the God who created the heavens and the earth, has the capacity to destroy the negative feelings of neglect, loneliness, and self-pity in you. 
looking beyond the hills to the God who made the heavens and the earth has the capacity to position you to experience divine involvement, comfort, and supernatural assistance. Number seven, looking beyond the hills to the God of heaven and earth has the capacity to energize you to surmount the mountains of life and to turn them to platforms for victory and testimony. And number eight, when you cultivate the discipline of looking beyond the hills to the God who made the heavens and the earth, it has the capacity to deliver you from wasting your life and time on fertile human effort and unnecessary struggles. Brethren, looking beyond the hills, otherwise known as the upward look, has the capacity to deliver all kinds of miracles to you. This is why my specific focus for today is to review the miracles of the upward look. As you look up to God in trust and faith, miracles happen in your life, regardless of the hopelessness of your physical condition. Generally, miracle is the supernatural release of the power of God occasioned by the engagement of the faith of man in the written word or the promise of God. When man chooses to believe what God says, regardless of other seemingly reasonable realities, the power of God is supernaturally provoked, released, and brought to bear on the problems of man for the manifestation of what I call beyond man solutions. Therefore, miracle is the supernatural result of the alliance between the faith of man and the power of God. Miracle is the manifestation of the character of the one through God, through our Lord Jesus Christ in the realm of human beings. The scope of miracle is naturally and mentally incomprehensible. Miracles are happenings that cannot be explained by limited human wisdom or understanding, but owes its explanation solely to God's divine acts and performances. Miracle signifies the dimensionless power of God in dealings with human beings. Miracle is not subject to magical device. Biblical miracle, brethren, is recognized both in the Old and the New Testament. Biblical miracle is expressed in the act of the apostles and in the lives of the patriarchs of old. Biblical miracle is demonstrated by Jesus Christ during his earthly ministry. Biblical miracle was witnessed and recognized by the early apostles. Biblical miracle is registered in our lives even today as we express a simple faith in the name of Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. What God did in the past, he could do it again and again even in our generation. At this point, brethren, it is important to briefly outline the specific miracles to expect in your life when you cultivate the spiritual discipline of looking up to God, the creator of the heaven and the earth, irrespective of the hopelessness of your physical condition. Something happens as you continually develop that discipline of looking up to God in faith and in unbroken trust. It doesn't matter what is happening around you, it doesn't matter how impossible your circumstances appear, and it doesn't matter the conclusion of the experts and the diagnosis of the medical doctors or the hopelessness of the condition as it appears in the physical. Once you begin to cultivate the spiritual discipline of looking up to God to help and to intervene, brethren, miracles begin to happen. And according to Psalm 121, verse 1 to 8, that I read earlier, two critical miracles are automatic result of the upward look. They are, number one, the miracle of stability in life. That's a critical miracle that happens to whoever cultivates the discipline of looking up to God in trust and faith regardless of the hopelessness of the physical condition. 
The second miracle, according to Psalm 121, verse 1 to 8, is the miracle of protection and preservation. These are the two critical miracles as we look through the entire chapter of Psalm 121, from verse 1 to 8. As we read through the eight verses, you will discover that there are two critical, these are the two critical miracles that happen as you look up to God as you look beyond the hills and you look up to the God who made the heavens and the earth. And these miracles are critical miracles in life that determines the quality of your life and the quality of your manifestation. Let me focus my attention today on the first one, which is the miracle of stability in life. The miracle of stability in life. When you start to read from Psalm 121, Verse 1 says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence come my help. And then in verse 2, it declares, My help comes from the Lord, who made the heavens and the earth. And then verse 3, which is my focus for today, especially the first part of verse 3. The Bible says, He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. That's a miracle. That miracle is the miracle of stability in life. It's the first product of looking up to God in confident trust and faith, regardless of the hopelessness and the intimidation of your physical environment and condition. The Bible says, He will not, He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. This implies that God will be personally responsible for the stability of your foot in life. He will see to it that you do not stumble that you do not sleep, that you do not falter, and that you do not fall. The road of life, brethren, is very slippery, very unsure, and full of unpredictable bends and dangerous turns. The road of life is a very risky road, full of thorns and thistles that are capable of slowing down or completely destroying the journey of people and making their feet feeble and their steps unsure. The road of life is a long road that is full of fear, anxiety, and restlessness. The road of life, brethren, is a road that is lonely and uneasy without God. The road of life is bedeviled with raging storms. It is bedeviled with hostile wind and scorching sun that make men victims. However, as you make God your focus in life, looking up to him in faith and complete dependence, he maintains the grip of your feet on the grounds of life, making your steps firm and sure, and helping you to successfully negotiate the unpredictable bends and turns of life. The presence of God becomes the confidence that keeps you stable and strengthens your feet regardless of the thorns and thistles, Your speed in life becomes maintained and preserved by his purpose for your life. He is ever with you to sustain you with the right hand of his righteousness against the raging storm, against the hostile wind, and against the scorching sun of life. God always leads you safely along the top of the cliff and goes ahead of you to keep you stable against the fear, anxiety, and uncertainty characterizing the road of life. God will keep your feet strong and steady above the eventualities of life. You are never a victim under his confident care. The Bible says in Psalm 18, I read verses 29, 32, 33, and 36. Psalm 18, verses 29, 32, 33, and 36. The Bible says, For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. It is God that guarded me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hen's feet, and setteth me upon my high places. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, that my feet did not sleep. That's the miracle of stability in life. 
regardless of the raging storms, regardless of the hostility of men and the wickedness of the devil, regardless of the terrible condition that is intimidating and promises to swallow men, as you trust in God, your feet in life will be secured. Sure, you will never fall. The Bible also said in Psalm 55, verse 22, Psalm 55, verse 22, the Bible says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. That's stability. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. That's a critical miracle of stability in the face of the instabilities of life. When God becomes the source of your stability in life, as a result of looking up to him in confident trust and faith, beloved, you will be divinely empowered to chase your enemies and catch up with them and you will not turn back until they are conquered. When God becomes your stability in life, your source of stability in life, because you have cultivated the discipline of the upward look, looking up to him for help, and as a result of your faith and trust in him, you will pin your enemy to the ground, and they will be helpless before you. Because God is the reason for your sure-footedness in life, you will place your feet upon the neck of your enemies and they will quail before you and fall defeated at your feet. Stability in life becomes a critical miracle that involves a divine ordering of your steps. Therefore, brethren, every step you take carries the mark of accuracy. That's one of the critical benefits of the miracle of stability, which is a product of the upward look. You are never behind in God's plan and in every good thing of life. Neither are you ahead of him. You are simply on time and on schedule with God. I'm praying for you that the miracle of stability that impact upon your life, the on time anointing will rest upon your life in the name of Jesus. They, these are motivations that helps you to trust God and connect you to the power of God to remain strong and stable in the midst of the slippery road of life. The Bible says in Psalm 37, I read verses 23 and 24. Psalm 37, I read verses 23 and 24. The Bible says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. A good man in this context is the one that trusts in God. He is the one that is looking beyond the hills to the God who made the heavens and the earth in unbroken trust and confident faith. The Bible says, And he delighted in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholded him with his hand. Brethren, God is committed to the continual keeping of the feet of his children who wholeheartedly trust and depend on him. As a matter of fact, God practically placed his angels under strict orders, not only to keep his children safe whenever they go or wherever they go, but also to steady them in their hands so as to keep them from stumbling against the rocks on the trail. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 9, 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 9, he will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. In Psalm 91, I read verses 11 and 12. Psalm 91, verses 11 and 12. The Bible says, For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. As I conclude today's broadcast, let me state very clearly that the main reason God will never let you stumble or sleep or fall in life is that he is always watching he never sleeps therefore nothing in your life can escape his attention the bible said in verse 3 psalm 121 let me read the whole of the verse the bible says he will not suffer thy foot to be moved why because he that keepeth thee will not slumber I want you to meditate on that Psalm 121 verse 3 and connect yourself by faith to the miracle of stability in life, which is a product 
of looking up to God in faith and trust, regardless of the shakings around you, you remain unshakable and strong-footed in life. As I conclude today's broadcast, let me also say very unequivocally that the same miraculous power that supervised the incredible birth of Jesus, the same miraculous power that turned ordinary water to a much needed better wine, the same miraculous power that healed the sick both in the days of Jesus and in the days of the apostles, the same miraculous power that raised Lazarus and that raised Jesus from the grave after four and three days respectively, that same power is at work for you today to keep you stable regardless of the unpredictable circumstances of life. The entire Bible is indeed the inspired account of the miraculous. The Bible is replete with miracles that happened as a result of God's incredible intervention. One thing is common in all the miraculous intervention of God in human affairs that were recorded in the Bible. The interventions were facilitated by the upward look of men unto God in wholehearted trust, in unshakable faith and absolute surrender, regardless of the reality of the danger and hopelessness in their physical circumstances. Brethren, God never failed them for once. God is still the same today. The scripture says in Psalm 34, verse 5, Psalm 34, verse 5, They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Whatever may be your present woe and predicament, your miracle can only be achieved in the upward look. The message of God to you is to look up God's way, is not down. Let us pray. Gracious God, I thank you for this truth and for the lives of everyone connecting to this broadcast. Lord, I pray that you will shape the understanding and the life of everyone according to the truth of today's teaching. Help every believer in Christ to know that it is wisdom to look unto God in unbroken trust and hope regardless of the raging storms of life. Help us, O oh Lord, to deliberately and continually align our hearts, minds, and lives with the truth of the words of God as we intentionally develop the spiritual discipline of trusting God in the face of the uncertainties of life. Help every believer to deliberately cultivate a broken and contrite heart that trembles at the truth of Scripture. Help every believer to pursue becoming everything God ordained them to become as the main motivation for living. Thank you, gracious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Wow, it's a pleasure sharing fellowship with you and sharing fellowship together with the Holy Ghost on today's broadcast. And I believe it is worth the while. Till next week, when by the grace of God, I shall come with a fresh edition of Navigating Life Through Grace. Let me encourage you that you should allow the miracle of stability of life, which is a direct product of looking up to God in faith and trust in His Word, no matter the hopelessness of your condition. Let that miracle become your motivation to look up to God and keep your focus on God and resist every distractions of life. It doesn't matter what the devil and the drum that has been beating around you. Keep your face on God. The Lord will lighten your face. He will keep your feet stable. He will sustain you with the right hand of his righteousness. You will never be moved in the name of Jesus. The Lord will keep you unshakable, no matter the shaking going on in life. As you keep trusting him and keep confessing his work, regardless of the negativity of your physical condition. It is well with you. I commit you to the hands of God that the Lord will sustain you and keep you and strengthen you and preserve you. See you next week by the grace of God. God bless you.